All right, what else do we got, question wise? Sure. Uh, so that's speed runs. Okay, so here's a, a question. I think we might have talked about this, but maybe not. So, uh, let's see. Mike mentioned somewhere in the playthrough that back in the day, everyone did a little bit of everything. Like a designer would be, ne would be necessary, also a bit of a programmer in situations like that. Do you feel like the personality and feelings of games is now impacted negatively or positively by how specialized and compartmentalized everything sounds like it is now? So we were probably exceptions. Uh, like you and you and me doing multiple, uh -huh. like doing multiple duties. Like that's not there's not a lot of people did that, right? Like there weren't a lot of designer programmers. Like um, yeah, probably not so much. Uh, and so uh, at least even even when we were on uh making PS2 games, it it wasn't exactly like well, every everybody wore so a lot of hats. But let's go let's go even farther back though. Let's go back to like Atari days. Yeah, NES let's talk days. about Marble Madness, maybe, right? Like what yeah, Cerny those were through. those were the days yeah. where you had like three people working on a game, doing everything. Yeah, uh, you know, even Insomniac's early days, like Disruptor and all those kind of stuff, they were very. Um, those were definitely very very sparse teams that they, 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 they were doing a little bit of everything. Did I do that right? Uh, I, do, I think that goes into the saw. How do I put it in the saw? Do I have to be closer? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it, it highlighted when you were on the, on the center. Cool. Oh no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna actually do it. It's doing the opposite, right? Yeah, you need to put the lift orb into that one. And I gotta get him across the gap some other way. Oh no, there's a there's a lift orb in there that you haven't framed oh. yet. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, going back to you know like arcade games, uh, say like Marble Madness. Uh, Mark Cerny, who's who's nowadays a game designer, uh, he was the art programmer on that right so he was a uh, he, he did art and programming at the same time mm -hmm. uh, the there's you know there's not a lot of people these days who are doing both of those things because people are uh, is, is the red one oh, I have to get the red one okay um, but that hasn't been the case for a long time like even when we started being a generalist was kind of an exception rather than the rule. Uh, and the specialization we see nowadays has a lot to do with the fact that we need people to pay very specific attention to very specific parts of the game more than like, uh, more than the, like it, it being less ideal for someone to be multitask. Does that make sense? Like, uh, because we have to pay attention to so many things now. Oh, wow. Wait. So a speed they... orb before. So let's put a speed orb right there. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. If the Emperor gets a hold of the dimensional you map, put it all he could spread his terror wherever he okay. pleased. He could take over everything. Uh. Okay, so now I've got two lift spheres, so I can put that one there. But yeah, I think my, my short answer is, uh, obviously it changes things, uh, but some of the things that it changes are that way because uh, that's, that's how we make really big games now. Uh, like, we, we need that level of specialization to make the kinds of games we're making today. Uh, I think that was the wrong orb. If you put the weight orb. Oh. I actually can't really tell. The, the green and the blue is difficult for me to tell the difference. Huh. The 
Okay, so they're all dying because I haven't put the lift orb up there yet. Okay. Oh, shit. No, stop it. Come here. Okay, that should work. Man, I'm bad at this. Nope, that's not working. Oh, there's probably a final thing that they need to get done over there. You probably need to walk over there and see what's actually going on. Um, oh, you know what it is? It probably is the, the you yeah. take the lift out of the saw and put the lift onto that part right there. And then the heavy orb into the saw. Oh, right. Do I still have one? There yeah. I do. Okay. There you go. That'll probably. Yeah, that that's right. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's just a, a necessity. I don't think it's like we're choosing not to have generalists because there's something better about not generalists. It's just that we need, we need people to be paying specific attention to parts of games that now are very huge that uh, uh, weren't necessarily always as huge, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I generally agree. Uh, I think it's just sort of uh, a final natural final consequence of games getting bigger and more complicated. That, I mean, there's only so much you can do. All right, what do we got next? Uh, let's see. Here's a... A question I'm sure you get every single time you interview for a new job, Mike. Oh, yeah? Which is, can I ask you what your favorite games are personally? And are there any series of games that have remained popular game to game in a similar or different way than Ratchet & Clank? Games that I like? Is so that the question? I, I think it's, uh, so it's two questions. One, what is your favorite games? I think that's just one question. Cool. And another game, uh, the other question is, do you have uh, examples of another game series that has sort of managed to stand the test of time year over year uh, like Ratchet and Clank. Uh, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me just put these spheres together. Uh, okay, so we can talk... Let's, let's start first about what kind of games we like. Sure. Uh, so, my favorite... My favorite games are Zelda games. Uh, I... I don't know why, but I love them. I recently just went back and replayed all of the... Uh, all right, so I'll take this away. I recently went back and played uh, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, and Link to the Past, and they are just as good as I remember. Uh, okay, that is not the right way to do that. Uh, so that that's... For me, those are the like the A number one... Uh, uh, franchise for me is Zelda. Second up, probably uh, uh, like open world games like Skyrim, uh, that sort of thing. Love those. Um, I think those are my main my main uh, 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 genres and, and games. What about you? Uh, so my my go to answer has always been uh, Harvest Moon is my uh, oh, is my yeah. favorite game uh, ever. It's just that uh, it tickles my brain in a very particular, uh, very particular way, which uh, I will always uh, love. Uh, so that's that's always been one of my, that's always my go-to sort of favorite game. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Harvest Moon's so good. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's a game that's that one's still going. That that game is still going, uh, going strong after all these years. Uh, so yeah, good on them. And then was the other question just like, uh, so there, what are our favorite games? And then was, what do we, can we think of any series that have managed to like really endure and still sort of be going after sort of all this time? A lot, right? Like, uh, you know, Mario. Uh, like there's, uh, there's a, so a lot of games. Thing, oh, go ahead. It's funny. Well, the one thing I will say about Mario, and this is not a knock on Ratchet or anything like that. But and this, I, and this is just, I think, unique to Mario more than anything else. I feel like 
Mario as a series is very interesting because I feel like every new Mario game that comes out just completely changes the game in one way or another. They do a lot of different and things. And as much as I love sort of the ratchet stuff and having worked on the like it doesn't have that sort of level of impact of every new ratchet game is like a event like every new Mario game is, right? Cuz every new Mario game has some feature some hook something about it that feels so new and uh and groundbreaking which i think is one of the things that's sort of very special about mario games and one of the things i think nintendo has managed to done well to do well after all this time is that their game can still feel that way sorry i'm just trying to what do i got i got a yellow one you still got a bunch of orbs that you haven't collected yet one Really? Yeah. So I haven't gotten but up there. I haven't gotten up there. But I don't know how to get up there. I can't even see how I would get up there. Maybe something with those? Any ideas? Uh, I think it has to do with I think if you put a speed and and uh, and flight orb back there, I think you can propel. If the speed is green. Yeah. So now you have to get back over there, and then you can get up there. You have to get up there, so you have to walk the speed. You have to fight the Emperor again, no matter what. But he will not catch us by surprise this time. Or maybe not. Fans are what's pushing him, so I can do that maybe. Oh, they're still going the yeah, wrong and then, direction. No, no, they're going, and then you put a flight orb down there, and then a lightning orb there, and there you go. You got it. Boom. Good thing I have you here. I know how to stop the cataclysm. Uh, yeah, so you were saying like Mario feels like a, a cultural thing to you, but I'm wondering if maybe. Like, this would feel like more of a cultural event for you if you had grown up with it. Like, there's a certain amount of, like, it being... Like, Mario was foundational to me as a kid. Mm -hmm. But to a lot of people, Ratchet was foundational to them as a kid. So we might not have the same perspective on Yeah, that. I mean, we certainly don't. And it's impossible to have that sort of... That, that same perspective, um, for sure. Uh, but no, I, I feel like... I, like I said, I do feel like any new Mario game that comes out really just changes the game in its in its own way. Um, that I don't think I don't think any other game series really uh, does that the way that they do. Well, that's true. Mario is a tennis star, a soccer champion, a platformer. That's right. Like uh, he he has been very uh, active in a lot of different ways. He's, he races carts. He's a doctor, apparently. Yeah. Like. Uh, he teaches typing. Oh, we got a big emotional moment coming up. You! Oh. It was you! What? He was useful. Wait, so was Kit the robot that took her arm? Oh. 
Ooh. Yeah. Pretty deep, huh? And Kit had to transform so she could try to save him. Yeah. But Kit wasn't a traitor, right? No, this was before. Before they had all met. Got it. Okay, when she was still evil. Yeah. So Ratchet and Clank are captive. Kit's off who knows where. And it's up to Rivet now? It's up to Rivet. Ooh. All right. Well, that's going to be a hell of a next episode. Yeah. So for uh, not developer commentary, uh, I am Tony Garcia. Definitely, Definitely not, not developer, developer commentary. commentary. I'm Mike Stout. And we will see you next time.